and somebody attached to a situation. And I think you would respect yourself more by saying no. Got to have sex with her and then nut is over and then you still feel like shit. If he really like liked that girl and pursued her and then found out, like, that's, oh, that's, that's different. my different. That's ex-man. Different. Like, that's different. That's different. Man, go nah, get not... some therapy, man. <laughs> <laughs> man you, you sound hurt. Yo, you go, yo, yo, go you, get man. some therapy, man. You know what I'm saying? He, try, he man, hollered at one of your issues, girls. Man. Like, it's all, that's over with, Go man. binge watch some high-level conversations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, worry, and mom. We are joined uh, today by somebody who, honestly, Rory, we've been trying to align with for a second. Yes. Sit down and chop it up with somebody who I think is very important. Highly respect. Uh, You know, somebody that I think is uh, a key figure and out here. You know, it's a lot of a lot of noise, a lot of pollution in the space of talking and, 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 and creating thoughts and things like that. But uh, this this brother here is somebody that I respect. Uh, I'm watching what he's doing. And um, I'm I'm happy that we finally got a chance to align and, and, and link up today and kick it with him for a few. Uh, we joined by uh, none other than uh, 19 Keys, thought leader. Man, pleasure to be here. You know what I mean? Just somebody that I might. Uh, it's funny seeing you, like the first time I remember seeing you in person, because like you one of those guys I look at, I'm like, yo, he's never outside. And then like I just seen you like randomly walking down Soho. I'm like, oh, this nigga's outside. <laughs> like, it was like, I just thought you was like a guy that I always think is like, you're in this space and then you just like disappear and go somewhere. And just like, nobody ever sees this dude out chilling nowhere. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where does he chill at? But um, first of all, welcome. Thank you for coming man, by, kicking it with us, man. Him, finally, man. we finally get to connect. Um, and, and, and congrats on everything that you're doing, man. Thank like I, I've seen your ascension. Uh, over the over the last couple of years, and I, I just I love what you're doing. I love everything you stand for. Anytime I hear you speaking, it's always something that I'm like, okay, like this is somebody that's really on a path of just like creating his own lane, doing his own thing, thinking for himself, empowering others to think for themselves, and just be their best selves. So thank you for coming here today and joining Absolutely. us, man. Appreciate that. Man. Thank you. Yep. No, for sure. And we share a birthday. Oh yeah, really? say word, say word. May fourth. Okay. Yeah, I was. That's uh, what the synergy is. Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, Come to the show at the Apollo yeah. on the fourth, but you know some behind the scenes stuff had yeah. happened. But yeah, we were gonna celebrate uh, both our birthday that day. Okay, that was good. Y'all the same age? Uh, I'm ninety. I don't know. No, nah, I'm young. Okay, uh, he don't want to tell us his age. <laughs> no, I like it. I'm, I'm Christ year. <laughs> I like man. it. Okay, I'm in my Christ year. Okay, thirty three. Okay, yes, sir. cool, cool. Um, I saw you recently posted on IG that ninety five percent of NFTs are useless. <laughs> now and. No. Nah. Can we? Because listen, Cause I, me, I, I've been wanting to have this conversation. Yeah, this yo, is listen, a great people, They killed Molina yeah, for a yo, while. I laughed at people from the thought of that. Yeah. I said, bro, okay, listen, the world is closed. We get it. Everything uh-huh. shut down. Now y'all trying to create new ways to love and, 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 and collect art, which I get. I but let's slow down. You're not telling me I have a Basquiat and I'm like, word? Yeah. When I could I'm Google. trying to go to your crib and you're like, nah, it's right here. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. And I could Google that too. And yeah, like still be not... on the same screen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the glasses off of the conversation. <laughs> okay. No, because I think this is a great conversation. I think there's a, a lot of lessons in it. Number one, I think first you got to start with you got boom and bust cycles with anything, mm-hmm. right? Meaning that new technologies are introduced, right? Mm-hmm. They are rapidly consumed, right? They create these bubbles, and then after the bubble, right, people stop being as interested in it. The media stops reporting on it, right? And then what ended up happening is it's still adopted, right? It's just not going through this craze and this frenzy of everybody looking at it as a shiny new thing. Right. And then it becomes a standard, right? Got you. Much like any other technology that we utilize. Mm -hmm. For me, I always looked at NFTs as a technology, Mm -hmm. right? Not a project, not art. It's a technology. Mm -hmm. The projects and the art was how people was using the technology. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you look at people, they say, okay, how am I using technology? They say, I'm going to make some money. Mm-hmm. Right. They seen things like people get almost a hundred million dollars for a digital painting. And then the gold rush begins. Mm-hmm. Right. First, it started off with people saying that, wait a minute, this is like some of the first digital collectible art that you can own. So mm-hmm. you've seen the Jay-Z's, you've seen the Gary V's and billionaires jumping into this space, yeah. right? That was a signal for many people to say, hey, this is a real thing. Mm-hmm. But it was also a signal for, you know, everybody, right, to be like, oh, I can do this thing. Mm-hmm. And for me, I like technology. I grew up as a like a tech enthusiast, okay. right? I used to read the popular mechanics books okay. and things of that nature. I used to watch sci-fi growing up. So I always had this enthusiasm for what the future would be. Mm-hmm. And not only that, when I first studied <clears throat> blockchain years ago, I would always think, okay, 
blockchain is great, but it's not until there's a good utility for it that mm -hmm. it will be adopted. Mm -hmm. So when I heard the non-fungible tokens, I was like, all right, this is the use case where a mass amount of people can adopt it, mm -hmm. right? So for me, number one, NFTs are still valuable, mm -hmm. right? The technology itself. Right. The projects is just saying that anybody can make a project. So yes, 80% of startups fail. Mm -hmm. So the math that people were doing early on to say that these projects not going to be worth anything was just a common sense reality, mm -hmm. right? It had no indication upon the technology, just the way that people consume things mm -hmm. yeah. unnecessarily unprovoked without any real value, mm -hmm. right? And then, of course, you go with the way media starts things. Yeah. Right. Because media wasn't really educating people on a true value. It was the fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, a lot of these projects are still booming. Some of them are just rolling out stuff in Walmart. They doing collaborations with major brands. They're 100 plus. Some of them are billion dollar brands mm -hmm. that they were able to take advantage of, put real like structure behind it and funding. And now they use the technology to create a billion dollar brand. They not something to laugh at. Right. Right. You can laugh about whatever value you want to think, but they took an opportunity, utilized the technology and created a brand. Right. Now, NFTs, you wouldn't want the technology to fail because the whole idea was to empower the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Right. The whole a lot of these ideas, the thesis behind blockchain was like, yo, we can decentralize things, right? To mm -hmm. where it's not just one person had a power. We can cut out middlemen and get a power to people to be able to go direct to consumer without having to go through like Ticketmaster or go through some of these middlemen taking fees and you get to control it and have royalties over your situation. Mm -hmm. So the ideas are solid. The ideas are saying that, man, you can start building your world versus mm -hmm. the inherited world that you grew up in and allowing people to shave points off your dollar that didn't do anything Thing to contribute to your intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So the idea of NFT still stand, but the masses, I think, are slow. Okay. The masses don't really want freedom. Mm -hmm. The masses want whatever the masters tell them. They want what the media tells them is good, bad, ugly. And so what you're going to do is get a fast consumption culture if we consume a technology without getting the true value. Okay. Same thing happened with AI. There's decentralized autonomous organizations such as DAOs, where it's not a top bottom system, but it's a shared community ownership over a corporation. People hear about these ideas of decentralized finance, consume it, and then wait for the next thing to come to be stimulated, mm -hmm. right? Because we got an overstimulation. Right. So it's like, for me, NFTs are just a representation of the way we consume things, a symptom of society today, a fast consumption culture. Looking for the next big thing. So is the value really in the technology of NFTs or is the value in who can set the market price. It's if they can move on to that. I saw that with crypto. Too. Yeah. Like I'll never ever talk like I'm an expert in that regard, but I saw it just move to a different name every time. And it was someone setting the value of it rather than it actually being the value. It's yeah. money. Well, <laughs> NFTs is a little different because it's literally a technology. Yeah. Right? Cryptocurrency is like an investment, mm. right? It's an asset, right? But NFTs can be used for anything. Mm. You can just reward fans and say that, hey, this is your membership pass. And if you want to let somebody sit on that couch, then they say, hey, if you got an NFT, come sit on the couch yeah. and we'll let you in the door. But you have to schedule month to month and only your NFT will give you access. That's still a utility that you can use to yeah. this day. Sure. Yeah. So NFTs allow you this utility and this use case that you normally wouldn't be able to do without creating like these sophisticated mechanisms in order to facilitate. Mm -hmm. But now I said, no. Not only NFTs, you got SBTs, which are soul bound tokens, meaning it's like if the DMV and the government start using the blockchain, which they are, mm -hmm. right? They saying that they can give you a digital ID that's on the blockchain that you can't go and mess with or hack. So now we know that if we scan it, it's really you, mm -hmm. right? Because only you would have this in your wallet. And soul bound means that it's not transferable, yeah. right? So you can't send this to nobody else. Mm -hmm. So the ideas behind it is still valuable. Yeah. And this is why if you go look, most of the large companies are still implementing the technology. Mm -hmm. They're just not using the brand of NFT yeah. to push it because they just need the tech use case itself. Yeah. So do you think NFT was more of an experiment to see if it worked? Well, I just think that's just the natural cycle of technology adoption. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and then it's just the the the, the newscasters don't know what they're talking about. Naturally. So when you get informed by the news, all they're doing is taking points from somebody told them something. They mm -hmm. don't know about technology. They don't know about blockchain. They can't yeah. give you any creative ways. One way I was teaching people was like, man, don't 
focus on buying stuff, focus on creating stuff. Mm -hmm. So it don't matter what happens in the cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Your goal was to create a value and connection to how do you implement it within your company, mm -hmm. right? It didn't matter what's going on in the marketplace, you still created a valuable product or a use case for it. Right. So it, there's, it was never a real, I would say, you know, it was a moment of a marketplace. Mm -hmm. And if you have any sense, you know, as you gradually see things play out, you see that, yeah, there are market makers that control things, that manipulate the market and decide where these prices are. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happens in these new technologies. Mm -hmm. It's not the people that mess it up. It's the people that got the money that end up messing it up. Right. The, the Those celebrity projects. But the celebrity projects was what celebrities normally do. They mm -hmm. get paid to advertise something that they don't understand. Right? And so people were blaming the celebrities, but that's just the way advertisement and marketing works. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was, that was purposeful? Uh, it's hard. To, I don't want to say Intentionally misleading? I can't say for everybody. I just think that that's the way that celebrities normally interact with business. Mm -hmm. And I don't think NFTs to them was something that they needed to, they thought that they needed to filter and take a special look at. So imagine your agent comes to you with a with a marketing deal, like, hey, okay, we got soda this week. Hey, NFTs next week. And they're mm -hmm. like, all right, tell me the script. Yeah, I'm gonna do both. I mm -hmm. think that a lot of them was just doing it like that. Yeah, and there was a lot yeah. of money attached to it. Mm -hmm. So you telling me, wait a minute, not only if I advertise this, I get commission off this advertisement, essentially, mm -hmm. right? And people are gonna buy the project. Why? Oh, because I'm a celebrity. They want to buy stuff. People right. been buying Pokemon cards, mm -hmm. right? I went to the uh, damn um, the deli over here. Man, they had Pokemon cards still in there being sold with yeah. the foil. Why do you buy collectible things? Mm -hmm. Right. What's the value of it? Mm -hmm. Right. It's the the feeling, the emotion connected to it. Why do people worship celebrities? Right. People try to cover up their own insecurities by looking into the perfection of others. Yeah. Do you think that there's any type of because I remember you said Pokemon. I remember when they, everybody was uh, on their phones chasing like imaginary Pokemons around L.A. A couple people died falling off a cliff because it was like a special Pokemon over here. So, like, how much of this do you attribute? Yeah, I'm getting to I'm, it's a point here. How much of this do you attribute to mental illness? Because <laughs> I think it's mental illness. Well, it was also one of the if first. Somebody uh, tell me they got a box. It was one of the first. They open their phone and it's like a a digital box. But I, th I think the Pokemon thing was very much an experiment as well. It was one of the easiest ways for VR to get in your yeah. phone from yeah. a mass yeah. level. Yeah. Well, so it, it's, it's not it mental illness outside. or cheap. cheap. It, it did that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it, it's hard to say because we got gaming culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The stuff that you buy inside games is not real. Yeah. At yeah. all. But yeah. how many children spend money on buying apps inside the game? Billions of dollars. Yeah. How is that any different? It's just digital items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And digital ownership that you're tracking. Mm -hmm. My whole thing was like, if it's digital and it has a connection to something in real world, right? Then that's different. So you buy something and there's land attached to it or mm -hmm. membership or access. Mm -hmm. Then you can easily say, I understand the value of that. Mm -hmm. In the future, because you got to really look at these things. What, what do they look like in 20 years? The ideas around the way we feel about them don't matter. Right. How will your children feel about digital collectibles? Mm -hmm. This level of, the, well, this new, this new generation of entrepreneurs that are coming in more people are owning stuff these days. More people are owning their properties, real estate. Do you attribute that to just getting information quicker? Like now it's easier for us to get mm -hmm. information. So you say like the older generation didn't do it, but the next generation is. Mm -hmm. I say because of information. The older generation didn't have the information that the younger generation had. They didn't have access to a lot of these things. They didn't have, you know, the internet in their hands. But now they could just tap into people all over the world and learn yeah. what's going on over here. Do you think it's too much information, though? Do you think that's a, a bad thing? I think, it, it, yeah, overconsumption is not a good thing because you can have light, right? But if you don't activate it, you're still in the dark. Mm -hmm. And information is like, you know, you all have the light is like potential, mm -hmm. right? But you actually have to put it in motion to have experience with it. Mm -hmm. And this generation lacks experience, but they got information. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's the same as having a super genius. He's standing, sitting right next to you, and this man knows nothing at all. Mm -hmm. If both of y'all stay in the same place and make the same moves, what does it matter? Mm -hmm. Right? The knowledge only matters as good as you are able to activate it into right. some sort. Right? So it's like this overly informed generation, but they under-execute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So they know a lot, but they do little. Mm -hmm. Right? And a lot of it becomes this uh, stagnation 
and this paralyzation, right? This information overload because they can't choose what they want to do. Right. All right. What, where do I get started? What do I do? It's not a, you know, my framework of looking at things years ago I put out was like, it started off with previous generations just need motivation. That mm -hmm. motivation gives you a motive to put you in motion, right? Mm -hmm. So you go activate, like I'm motivated, I'm going to go on the move. Then it had to be inspiration. I'm watching you do it, I get inspired. Now I'm spirited, I'm ready to go activate. Then it became education. Now I got to teach you how to do it, right? Because what's required to stimulate every generation becomes more and more and more, mm -hmm. right? And then it became not just education where I gave you the game. Now you want instructions. Now you want me to coach you through the whole process, mm -hmm. step by step here. I'm, I'm going to walk you through it, all right? Mm -hmm. Do one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, and then you get to it, mm -hmm. right? Now we in a generation of automation. Mm -hmm. Just do it for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't why, why you can't just do it for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to pay for nothing, don't want to do nothing, and mm -hmm. that's where AI comes. Mm -hmm. Right? So we are in this generation of automation and we're spoiled. Mm -hmm. This generation is so goddamn spoiled because we in this place and time where we it ain't no longer about survival. No. You think it is, but it's not. If you live in America, it definitely ain't about no damn survival. Mm -hmm. Cause you overprivileged. Mm -hmm. Because you got internet, you got 5G, you got access to free AI. Mm -hmm. Open AI give you free AI tools. You mm -hmm. got blockchain. You can decide to do whatever you want to, right? When I grew up, we didn't have access to all that. We had to go to the library, sit down, get a library card, rent some internet time, check out a book to learn something, bring it back. Mm -hmm. Right? We we could we was leasing information. We didn't even own it. Mm -hmm. That damn dial-up speed was slow as hell with that little <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, look at how our our access is our privilege did, did it and our wealth. Much, though? Hell yeah. It just everything. went digital because now they they own Speed. our data. Speed. We mm. were we were leasing the information from a library and now we're the information. So as much as I agreed that it may not be a, a straight up survival thing in America, but a lot of people that can't easily access 5G internet. I know it sounds crazy, but some people can't. There's some they, they, I feel like they become the most vulnerable to the AI. They become the consumption of the AI. They are now the sheep of the AI because they have to depend on that. So I agree, but I think there's another side of that coin. Well, the where we're, we're, we're so easily taken advantage of now because of it, because the access is so easy. We have, we have become, we're, we're the commercial, we're the data, we're, we're what's keeping this shit moving and we're not benefiting from it. We think we are because shit is so easy. Mm -hmm. Life is easy now, but we're the reason that it's moving forward, but we're not really benefiting from it. It's keeping us stagnant. It's keeping us in the same motherfucking place. We just sit here. Where do you we don't have to do be? shit. That's the question. And that's the most manipulation. It's not what I'm talking about. It dilutes your mind to not even know what you want to do. Yeah, because that becomes the thing. It's like the people have the power, but if you get the people with power and they don't want anything, they ain't going to do nothing with the power. And mm -hmm. I think that's so, where AI This is thinks. where you get people to where I give you the tool. Mm -hmm. I know you won't use it for nothing powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, you release a tool like AI to hundreds of millions of people and you have no worries of the world utilizing it to try to destroy institutions, governments, change things. Mm -hmm. They ain't got no worries at yeah. all, mm -hmm. right? They come and talk about it. They the the fear that they really have is what AI is gonna do to the people. Now, what people go utilize the AI for, mm -hmm. right? That's a crazy thing to think about. Well, there was years of. I mean, I personally believe AI has been around for quite some time, oh, it has. and we had to be conditioned where we would not benefit from AI. Well, you had to put us in a very numb place as human beings for when AI comes, we'd rather use it to not have to do any work rather than utilize it to our benefit. It's benefiting the people that are controlling it. AI is the first technology in, in that I know of that was marketed, right, for like 50 years before a real rollout. So mm -hmm. we were already consenting to it, mm -hmm. right? We watched movies about it. We read books about it. Mm -hmm. We were indoctrinated for decades. Yeah, wait So when ChatGPT came out, Right, this is easy. I know what AI is. Yeah. NFTs came out. I don't know what the hell an AI is. Blockchain, you don't know. AI? Mm -hmm. There's been movies on it for 50 plus years. Yeah. So I said they had to wait. They had right. to market it to us. Nothing happens us numb in to America it. without consent. Right? Mm -hmm. They have to get the masses to consent to things. Then they roll it out. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that now all of a sudden they're starting to give us 
you know, more images of UFOs and, you know, saying like, yes, they are real and we've been studying them. And last two weeks ago, the Mexican officials rolled out two rotisserie chickens. The, the, the paper mache. The, the niggas rolled out two, <laughs> two, they rolled out two rotisserie chickens and told us, like, yeah, this is, like, why do you think, like, why now? What's that? Like, because I know something is coming. Like, and I, we had a talk on the, on the show uh, last week and I was like, yo, I think that now we're in a space where we're so numb to things I said, if President Trump was to get assassinated, I don't think nobody would care. By an alien, we probably would be like, "Damn, that's crazy," and the and, and life it, would as move soon on. As we hit refresh. <laughs> soon as we hit refresh, yep. we on to the next shit. So it's like, why now are they giving us, you know, two corpses of aliens uh, and, and, and showing us like, yeah, these are real, uh, showing us, you know, aerial uh, unidentified flying objects that are making patterns and moves that. We know we don't have the technology to make. Like, why now are they giving it to us right in our face? Well, I think we at the end. We at the end of a of a world, right? Not the world itself, but a world, mm -hmm. right? We at the end of America's empire of power. Okay, right. When you get to these stages of any empire, you get desperate. You have to roll out every single stop that you possibly can, mm -hmm. right? America just went through a baby bust, mm -hmm. right? We're not producing that many babies, right? America's influence is waning, mm -hmm. right? America's dollar is losing its grip on the world, mm -hmm. right? So America has to roll out all stops to figure out how to maintain power. And so do other governments, not only, right, from other governments, but over their own people, mm -hmm. right? Because as you expose people to these vast amounts of information as well, they become extremely more conscious mm -hmm. about things, right? Their exposure and their ability to believe things become more extreme, mm -hmm. right? We've seen that with C-19 and a lot of people didn't want to take the V. And now there's a whole funded campaign against it to where not only the people, but their senators and governors who won't roll that out in their own states. And, mm -hmm. and they're, they're repeating the same thing that the so-called conspiracy theorists were competing previously, right? So we're now in this time and age where it's a fight for the battle of the future, mm -hmm. right? They put in, they go put a lot of smoke screens out there, mm -hmm. right? When they already know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like the government is is almost a twofold thing. They're probably not as powerful as you think, and they're probably more powerful than you think, mm -hmm. right? The movies make them seem like the all-knowing, seeing eye, yeah. right? The most powerful in the world. Mm -hmm. They're not that, mm -hmm. right? But the propaganda is for them to take credit for that, mm -hmm. right? Now, this whole alien thing is interesting for many different reasons, right? I would always defer to Dr. Wesley in the alien conversation because he gave a great breakdown about the extraterrestrials and the superterrestrials. Um, but it's like, this is like the, 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 the battle of illusions, the battle of the skies, mm -hmm. the battle for supremacy, the battle for world power, the battle for one world power, mm -hmm. right? Like, how can this be used? Follow the money and the power, mm -hmm. right? And then you get the agenda. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, these things have always been clocked before they happen, right? How many movies we've seen about alien invasions? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What does that do? So-called to give the government more power. Mm -hmm. Each and every time we have a catastrophe, it gives you them more power, mm -hmm. right? So I would look at, for me, it's simple. It's about power and control, more okay. power and control. And then if the alien is the threat, you know what I'm saying? And what can't they do to, you know... What rights can't they strip you away from to yeah. protect you from an alien threat? Right. Right? We've seen what happened during 9-11. Mm -hmm. Right? That was an alien threat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It bombed the so-called building and all of a sudden they stripped away all your rights and you happily gave them over. Mm -hmm. Patriot Act. It's, the, it's, it's going to get to a point where, you know, they don't need consent anymore mm -hmm. and you won't even care. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the ultimate place you go to. Like, bro, it's an alien threat. We ain't got to ask you for nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then <laughs> people go be like, shit, take my rights away. Right. Save me. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So... I think that th this thing can go in many different ways, but aliens is the last thing I'm afraid of. Mm. Yeah. That's and a recycled. I, I think, that's a recycled playbook. The alien thing. Yeah. Like oh well, but I think that the alien thing now is a new page of the playbook because now it can allow unity amongst people that have been working together behind the scenes for quite some time. That we all thought were enemies amongst the world, but they've been friends. Mm -hmm. This they've been doing this back and forth no, and yeah, using all of us. Now when aliens come in, now we can do a fake unity thing and world leaders that were supposed to hate each other but actually work with each other Man, can now publicly come person. together and we can all do this bullshit. Yeah, but I'm saying in terms of 
sure, the aliens are the new threat enemy, however we want to market them. But I'm saying in terms of like fear mongering and doing a catastrophic event, to your point, 9-11 creates communal unity. We gave up all of our rights. We're all American now. We love each other. Go get the bad guy. But like in war, we make trillions of dollars. We A lot of technologies come out of war. For better or worse, war produces a lot of good shit, which is sad to say. We're already... Uh selling some of our military intelligence from this Ukraine war. Yeah, yeah. But even so. <laughs> even if you bring in the COVID thing, whatever side you stand on, conspiracy, reality, whatever the case may be, we saw how quickly people were willing to surrender their free will, stay at home, and then vilify people that weren't. But at the same time, we were seeing on the back end corporations making billions of dollars because they were just, you know, slapping, hey, these bodies are attributed to COVID, whatever the case may be. Cash cow keeps rolling in. So I'm like, I don't think the alien, it's not that surprising. I just think it's another opportunity for them to be like, new enemy, more yeah. money. Like, it's just a reason to get more money. Absolutely. And to surrender people. Because again, we preach democracy. We preach free will. But how can we suspend that for a year or however long it takes? Iraq was like a fucking 10-year deal. Mm-hmm. We were just dumping money into something we knew was pointless. And then what else they go use? I mean, if you look at media, media always informs us about what's to come. Mm -hmm. What else in media has there been besides the alien threat, the AI? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if they've been programming you with these ideas of fear of all these years, then that's the playbook. Like, what other threat do we even know of? And I can already see the the long-term playbook they're doing with the Mexico reveal of the Two foot paper mache. Man, thing. them them little them little MIB coffee mugs. It's, it's such a easy. <laughs> it's such an easy way to get the people to say, okay, aliens may exist, but they're small. They're not threatening. Man, that's just a little coming from Mexico. I, ain't nothing new. Of course, I was in into Postland. It was there. <laughs> <laughs> just say shout out to my brown people. Shout out to my brown people. But it's just little breadcrumbs because then, okay, we found a new series of aliens that are way more threatening. Yeah. You just have to get people because they want to cause a crazy stir. Yeah, because them so, little aliens. So let's, let's expose that they're out. Yeah, we'll be fine. It's cool. <laughs> I wish they would pull up over. I'm like, okay, yeah. y'all don't want to. Exactly. You have to introduce. Like DoorDash guy. Yeah, you know, we not doing that. Without mass hysteria, here they are. Aliens exist. Mm-hmm. But that's just to ease us into the idea they exist. And they'll become threatening by next year. Oh, yeah. Year after that. Yeah. Then they'll become taller. Yeah. Then they'll become scarier. Mm-hmm. Then they'll have more weapons. Mm-hmm. Like- well, you mentioned extraterrestrial and super terrestrial. What are the are the differences in size and strength? Like what are the what are the nuances between the two? Dr. West was the first person I heard talk about extraterrestrial and super terrestrial. And I don't have his his defined definitions ahead of me. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna misquote him. You know what I mean? If I, I, before the end of this, if one of y'all can pull that up by Dr. Wesley, yeah, I mean, then I'll let y'all know a little bit later. Have you watched any of these Dr. Stephen Greer interviews that have been? I haven't. I met him uh, through Billy Carson at the award show, but I I ain't watched them interviews. He has some You know why? Because one thing about the alien community is they always discount the NOI. Right. And the NOI was the first to start the conversation around mm-hmm. the 100%. aliens. Mm-hmm. And they be acting like they don't know, like they didn't get that information from, from the yeah. messenger. From, yeah. But he had a full description of it. Mm-hmm. He broke it down in layers and, you know, in the 30s. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like he was right there at the forefront of this conversation. And I believe even with the, if we get the definition of the extraterrestrials and the super terrestrials, that's where Dr. Wesley was kind of going and saying that these ain't aliens, man. There are people up there. Why, mm-hmm. why I brought up Dr. Stephen Greer, and I haven't seen every interview he's ever done or read every book that he's published. He is one of the few that I've noticed that he doesn't bring up the NOI, but he doesn't discredit any mm-hmm. of that. And I don't know if he's been asked that direct question to even that go might. to that side, but- I, he's one of the few I haven't seen discredited. it. Well, no, because no, the government never tried to discredit. Well, there's not you much would, to you discredit. Would think, you would think that would be a low-hanging fruit, though. Mm-hmm. These people believe in alien ships and yeah. technology, but yeah. they've never, right? But look at where we are in 2023. You know what I mean? Like, you know, almost 90 years after that conversation was started, they never tried to use that as propaganda against mm-hmm. the NOI. Why? Mm-hmm. I, I, that's so the thing. There's not much you can those discredit are, in that. Yeah, but you would you would you would have to put out. It would make sense to me if I'm the media that I'm gonna make these people sound crazy. Mm-hmm. They're talking about alien technology, mm-hmm. propulsion ships, and anti gravity and technology that nowhere near exists today. Mm-hmm. This would be an easy way to make them sound crazy. Mm-hmm. Government was like, 
Study that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, let's, yeah. let's, well, let's, I mean, let's study that. When a lot of facts match up with what NASA's given and what the right. I'm saying, it's t- it, when you can't really discredit them. The astronomy of Elijah Muhammad was on point. Mm. You know, the things he talked about with Mars and Pluto, those are always on point. He was never discredited from his astronomy and the conversation about the mothership yeah. and the baby planes, right? But also, the vast amount of society don't really know Elijah Muhammad and his teachings and his works. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They only know the propaganda that surrounds and that shrouds his legacy. Mm-hmm. For sure. You had an interesting tweet the other day. You said, uh, all these artists worshiping the devil, mm. hip-hop going full demonic. Goddamn. And nobody speaking on it. Goddamn. I'll... I, I, I know why you're saying that because I obviously you know there are a lot of artists where we're starting to see symbolisms and things like we used to see it before, but now it's more prevalent. Now mm-hmm. it's more common. Now it's normal. People are talking about it. They're recognizing it, and again, people are just so numb to everything. They just keep moving on mm-hmm. business as usual. Like, Sad. what's your feeling on obviously you know the the money that's behind the monetization behind the demonic uh, symbolism and the artists pushing that onto the onto their uh, their, their followers. What is your, your 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 take on that? Like, do you feel like that's a direct threat to the culture of hip hop? Is it a reason that they're doing it? Is somebody behind it controlling that? Yeah. It's not hip hop. It's industry. Right? And okay. I think too much they get convoluted as one thing. So if I can rap, that's a skill. Mm-hmm. Don't mean I'm hip hop, but right. that's a skill that is associated with hip hop artists, mm-hmm. right? Then there's the hip hop culture, which would be the foundation, right? Right. Then you have the industry, which is the music business, right? Which is completely different than hip hop in its beginnings as a culture to express the arts of a people, mm-hmm. right? So when you start talking about demons and things of that nature that's an industry that has always been connected with that those people Mm -hmm. that fund that they believe in the devil wholeheartedly Mm -hmm. you know what I mean they believe in Satan they believe in those symbols and they push that onto their artists or they find artists Mm -hmm. who believe in those things so that they can fund them then they connect them with the brand of hip hop and we be like oh rap going crazy Mm -hmm. that's not rap that's go look at whoever funds that that's them Mm -hmm. and I think we have to get to a point where you can filter these things out mm-hmm. because hip hop gets a bad rap because it's like everybody gets adopted into the family, mm-hmm. right? But they not really blood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, I look at like, you know, society publicly is usually anti-Satan, mm-hmm. right? It's anti-demon, mm-hmm. right? Because you're supposed to follow God, the, the, the angels. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But the demon thing is like a anti-establishment, so-called, mm-hmm. right? The demon thing is like we don't trust institutions so people are becoming the villains, mm-hmm. right? Which kind of means that they connect the church as an institution, which is God, so they rather be devil instead, right? It's this reversal of roles that's happening today. Mm-hmm. So with the demon thing, though, with black people, though, is weird because that's definitely don't come from us. That's not our thing. That, well, it's not our thing. Like, that's rock and roll. Mm-hmm. You see them with the Baphomet heads and all of those different things. But that's not an inherent, right, uh, Afro-Asiatic, you know, thing to do. Mm-hmm. So, for me, it's not our culture that we see when that's being expressed. That's not hip-hop at all. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the industry. Right. And I think it's a simple way of saying it is the fact that these are so-called label as hip hop artists. Right. And they are messing up the image. Right. Of hip hop because they're taking things that are anti-culture and representing it as culture mm-hmm. because the devil is death culture, not life. Right. Mm. Right. So it's not values and morals. It's do as thou will, not do God's will. Mm-hmm. And so society is where closer to do what we want to do as individual, our desires, do whatever I want to. Mm-hmm. Right. My choice. Mm-hmm. Not. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do the good thing. It's nope. Don't judge me. Let me be shameless in whatever I want to do. Mm-hmm. Right? So they got everybody on demon time. Right? And that industry used to have to be a little more in the shadows. Now they can be open in the light. Mm. Now I'm a doja cat. Go from I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cow. I'm a cow to I'm a demon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this disassociation. Mm-hmm. And these things become courts because it's from the occult. Mm-hmm. Right? And people grasp onto these things because they're looking for identity. Right. They're looking to be connected to something that's anti-establishment. Right. And so these things become normalized. But what is the effect of a generation following the devil and seeing themselves as demons and following Satanism and putting the upside down crosses on and following these type of rituals when 
I was in high school, we looked at that as the Illuminati. Yeah. Right? We looked at the, the Bohemian Grove videos and, you know, we was weirded out by it. Now, that's normal. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even during that time, you had to think like, man, maybe they was just impressioning us so that by the time we get older, we accepted it because we already known of We've it since it high so school. Long. Yeah. But how's the inverse and of that any different? Like, the inverse of what? If the demonic devil stuff, if you're religious, then you have to, in fact, believe in God and the devil, mm -hmm. right? One can't exist without the other. If you're actually religious and follow the book and all that shit, you have to follow it. No? I mean, it depends what religion, per se. If you want to get like into straight Christianity, that's probably the cut and dry version. I don't know if all religions are yeah, in that realm. There's definitely a yin and a yang of stuff, but straight up God and the devil is is not based off every religion. But, but maybe in, in, in the most basic But, but Christianity is also, uh, quote unquote, the most mainstream. So a lot of the stuff that's put into entertainment is based off images in Christianity because it's what's been put in front of our faces, especially in America. Yeah. Since we were born. So I'm saying, the, so the- so, so Doja, I don't think Doja is someone that has met a, a member of the Illuminati and said, you should be a devil worshiper. I think she's intelligent and realized what works in entertainment right now yeah. is the anti-culture. And I can go do my demon devil shit, even though I think she's trolling to some degree to say, look how easy it is for me to make shit pop off because I'm a demon now and I'm a devil. Mm. And that is based, I think, more off Christianity than religion per se. Because that's just what's so mainstream in the U.S. I think a lot of the times what that is, too, is, you know, these people are just looking for a way to say something, do something to just garner some attention. Yeah, shock value. And get people but, talking but, about But them. to Key's point, that shock value shit is usually rooted in demonic shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they really because be practicing that. Look at, look at um, Black China. She really had that shit tatted on her. You know what I mean? And when you tap, like, you know, energy is real. Dark forces are real. 100%. You know what I mean? When a person is is involved in that that shame and that that uh, guilt energy, that dark energy, right? A person feels low about themselves. We live in the, the dark triad of personalities. You know what I mean? The psychopathic personalities, the narcissism, the Machiavellian personalities, mm -hmm. right? The the lack of energy, the, the sadists, mm -hmm. right? And these personalities are now becoming more prevalent, especially with technology, mm -hmm. right? And when we look at like what people are pulling on, uh, what aspects of people that they're, they're not pulling on the higher self of people, they're pulling on the lower self. Mm -hmm. They're going to the lower hanging fruits. Mm -hmm. This is what marketers and psychologists have done throughout America to sell products, mm -hmm. Right. When they wanted women to smoke cigarettes. Right. They played them on the idea of power to be like men when mm -hmm. only men smoked it. Mm -hmm. And then women associated that with, you know, the torchlight of freedom mm -hmm. because they started playing on human being desires in their dark side. Mm -hmm. That was the whole idea. So while people are trying to be morally straight and not give in to these dark side of things, they were saying, no. This is real freedom. Mm -hmm. This is liberty. Mm -hmm. But whose voice is that? Historically, that was supposed to be like the voice of the devil, mm -hmm. right? That was supposed to be the one that you you balance out, the light and the dark, mm -hmm. right? I was taught Satan is more of a group of people in coalition doing evil, mm -hmm. right? Where the devil is an inner aspect of self, right? That is the light and the dark within, right? The one that devalues is the devil. The one that add values is God. The one that try to get you to the lower inclination versus the higher thought process. Mm -hmm. Some people call it the chakras, right? Mm -hmm. The root to where you thinking of your lower desires or, you know, the shock or the crown to where you're thinking of higher self, critical thinking, analysis, you in your imagination thinking about the future. So it's like society is just playing on the desires. And this is why you got so much stress, anxiety, depression, and suicidal thinking and ideation because it doesn't give you an outlet to express self for the future, mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of these things are rooted in the addiction or not the, the worshiping of death, mm -hmm. right? The not being happy, mm -hmm. right? These little kids got damn are cutters and suicidal and they want to be a part of something, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of that is also just the natural machine of too much technology consumption. And yeah. big pharma. It's, it's pharma as well. So when you have overconsumption of technology, yes, it decreases mental health, right? We go to a mental death. 
Instead of a life culture is a death culture. You got, you know, mobilization, automation, digitization. As the world becomes increasingly more technological, it becomes less spiritual, right? And then that spiritual disconnection, that spiritual dryness means you have less of a connection to God, right? And the things that God made, nature, mm -hmm. right? And now you're more connected to the things that man made, machines, mm -hmm. right? And so you could go get your hallucinations from a, a plant, if you want to, you can go step into a VR world by tapping into a mushroom, mm -hmm. but instead, no, you're now getting that stimulation from machine, mm -hmm. right? You go get that VR from a machine, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, it's that thing where man is falling in love with the illusions of the world, mm -hmm. right? And the devil go give you nothing, which is the illusion, mm -hmm. right? God give you everything. That's nature. That's mm -hmm. true reality and self. Right. But he say, no, I'll pull on your desires. I'll let you dream and sleep for the rest of your life. God said, well, listen, I'm going to take you through real life experience, which is life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to live. But when I show you how to live, you have the strength and ability to go through life. The devil pulls on those cords where you don't even want to go through life, mm -hmm. right? Because it feels like too much. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you need to be protected, right? When a pimp comes and protect a woman that's insecure, she'll give up her body for that protection. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, no, God is supposed to be the preparation. You don't need protection. You good. Go out in the world. You one of my soldiers. Mm. Have uh, one entertainment salacious question le left, I think. Do you so think the movie Oppenheimer coming out was just ironic timing or purposeful? There's no coincidence in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was... Because um, when I saw was, that trailer, I said, oh, right on was, fucking time. You no, know what? There was an interesting <laughs> correlation between Oppenheimer and like Barbie. They were showing on how, and I'm a, I don't want to misconstrue the facts on it, but they were just explaining how when the, the 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 launching of the bomb testing and then the launching of the Barbies, and there was like three different correlations. Mm -hmm. Like after the bomb thing, then it was the Barbie thing. And, you know, it's, it's always interesting with Hollywood. You know what I mean? Because Oppenheimer was man playing God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and at this point where you learn some codes of the universe and this is how you use them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, those codes of the universe, those maths, those numbers, those things that you discovered should be used for construction, mm -hmm. right? Not where man decides to figure out how he can destroy man. Yeah. Because we learn some codes that could destroy the whole planet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we use them what? To go to war and spread fear tactics against each other. Mm -hmm. And so man is doing the same thing with machine. We learn the codes to be able to tap in to create sentient beings, right? Mm -hmm. And to automate processes that, that deeply reflect our own neocortex and beginnings of advancement. And now we're utilizing them for what? Yeah. So man is so inundated in capitalism and his own desires and power. Mm -hmm. And now the average human being is doing that, that Machiavellian nature to step over anybody to get what you want, right? That psychopathic nature to be completely unempathetic, right? That is directly sheeped, uh, uh, steeped into capitalism, mm -hmm. winning the wars. Number one you know book put in prison too, by the way. Yeah. Then the, the sadicism, you know what I mean, is that, that you are, you know, expressly... Um, getting some sort of satisfaction out of the harm for others, right? That you don't even know. Mm -hmm. That's social media. We can't, we laugh at people's pain. We want to see them get counseled. We want to see them get hurt, mm -hmm. right? To fill up whatever lack that you missing in your own life, mm -hmm. right? The narcissism to where everything is about me, yeah, right? That's social media. I need my likes. These are my selfies. Everything is about me. Mm -hmm. So it's the dark, you know, personalities that's constantly being spread throughout reality. And Oppenheimer was one of them, right? Oppenheimer, you know, was great in his ability to lead the project into fruition, mm -hmm. right? But he wasn't a great man to be celebrated, mm. right? The same way, you know, these men who create these destructive forces, he went around and he knew these other scientists, he was the only person that could get it done. He was the one willing to get it done. Mm -hmm. He was the one willing to sell his soul. Mm -hmm. Right. There was that's the thing about reality is that, you know, the scientists that do it aren't the only ones that know how to crack the codes of the universe. Right. I brought up Oppenheimer, not just with Hollywood. I thought it was very convenient that they brought out the aliens after the Oppenheimer movie. Like Man, Oppenheimer ain't get that technology from the aliens. I, I, Oppenheimer, Let me not use the word alien. Well, yeah. Yeah. It was but, a lot going on in yeah. the fields of study. Where do you think you we got mean? that from? Man, come on, man. He got it from the mothership. He was They was given that technology, right, to show the power of God. Mm -hmm. Understand me? Like, 
you gotta you gotta understand, man. You we dealing with you know prophetic things right now. We're mm -hmm. dealing with a, a time of scriptures and revelation. Whether you want to believe or not, this is the great unfolding of things. Yeah, right. The great unfolding of forces and power, and so. This is that time and age where you have to be a high level observer to really see the signs. Mm. The average person don't. I look at things literally from like a high level observational standpoint. You know what I'm saying? And signs and symbols is for the conscious mind. It's for the righteous minds. Everybody don't see it, but signs and symbols control the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. There was so much knowledge coming out of the early 20s, right? So many great thinkers that you know, the mentalism of that era, that's the positivism of that era is what we utilize now, the manifestation of utilizing the universal laws. But then the scientific paradigms that was happening during that time, right? What was man given during that time that allowed him to exceed his abilities? They just had the Wright brothers barely flying a car, right? How all of a sudden we make that giant leap to talking about flying saucers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we go from you know, even imagining the technology, propulsion jets and anti-gravity, when we barely believed that the Wright brothers would ever get, right, the goddamn wings off the ground to fly. Right. How do you make that jump that fast? It right. seems like a thousand years happened within 20 years mm -hmm. in between that space. Mm -hmm. And then from flight on. It can only happen from crazy as someone well. not of this world, with yeah. knowledge not of this world. Right. Right. Giving that to a people to study. Mm -hmm. Right. And now we in that day and age, like I said. I don't think this thing is going to go the way people think it's going to go, but the future is uncertain. Nobody controls the future. Mm -hmm. Nothing is certain in the future besides what the people believe because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Right? And when man playing God, one of the thing about the nuclear weapon is like a singularity when man destroys himself. Mm -hmm. Right? He gets so big within his own thinking. He's given the codes. And that's why they had to come up with the MAD, the Mutually Assured Destruction. You don't use the weapons, we don't use the weapons, but we both got them. Mm -hmm. Those treaties were destroyed, and now it was every man for themselves. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, they were trying to stop nations from compiling and stockpiling these weapons. Mm -hmm. But when you go look at throughout their files, you're going to see that, you know, there's been planes shot down. There's been a weapon system targeted. Mm -hmm. There's so many undisclosed. Yeah. The disclosed files you ain't got to worry about. Right. It's the undisclosed things. Yeah. Why is there so much undisclosed to the American people? Mm -hmm. It's not just some national security threat, but mm -hmm. it, it's not until people consent yeah. to what hasn't been disclosed that they will undisclose it. Like, okay, we're ready because people ain't going to trip now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's been long enough. Oh, people believe in these things. Now, give the information from mm -hmm. 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. I want current, up-to-date data. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Keep them back but there's some black gods out here moving around, man. I be seeing them in them little ships, man. They be up there saying, what's up, salute. I see you. you know what I mean? I One mean, of them told me they watch high-level conversations. Yeah, yeah. Have you, you know had any sightings or anything like that? Huh? Have you or anyone you know have any Hell sightings? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Mm. I be seeing them in the, and they don't even be the satellites. I be seeing them little in the sky. Moving around and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They be tapped in. Listen, the night sky is the most mysterious thing to modern man. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we have skyline. We don't have a night sky. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't oh, oh, look up like the ancestors did and see millions of stars. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't see our galaxy. Yeah. Our galaxy, we see on movies and in books. Mm -hmm. We, The ancient man... When he didn't have the so-called technology we had, he didn't get to look up. The Dogon people was able to chart stars mm -hmm. before there was so-called astronomy. How did they do that? Mm -hmm. They had a connection that was beyond this world, mm -hmm. right? So modern man, in his ideas of his advancement, is still slow to be able to reveal how ancient man did what he did. But he had a different reality. I wish every single day at night you look up and you see millions of stars. You see asteroids shooting around. You see little things floating. But or, man barely even looks up to notice. Yeah. Or build pyramids. Yeah. Like who the, who and else? two who, different who continents that are on the same We always looking down line. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man is always with his head down, not his head up. Mm -hmm. Ancient man used to look up way more mm -hmm. in his day. He would, When I was a child, I used to stare at the clouds. You know how you see the different figures mm -hmm. in the... That makes your mind think differently, mm -hmm. right? When the night comes, you used to stare at the stars and just gaze. Yeah. That's great for your mental health. Yeah. But I remember the first time when I was flying over to Africa, I seen the real sky and I'm like, 
I thought it was fake. Same. I'm like, yo, this really exists. I thought like, yeah. I thought that was just like CGI they added on to the movies. I looked out the window. I said, oh, I'm looking to see if anybody else see. Obviously, they were more well traveled than yeah. me at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they like, bro, it's stars. Yes, yeah. it's the Milky Way, brother. Yeah. So you I was going to bring that up because when I obviously growing up here in New York and just anywhere in the United States, there's constant air pollution. You can seldom see anything. Mm -hmm. Although I understand what you're saying, the looking up versus down, meaning studying the earth rather than your phone. I get that concept. But when I went to Africa, it's same deal, South Africa, I was in like Johannesburg uh, and looked up and I took a bunch, I took some acid. Mm. And then I really, it was weird. I had like this whole, Tripping. I'm seeing my life in my cycle in the realm of hum humanity and what it means to just be a, a present being rather than an individual. And the, the sky itself was just the craziest thing that from that trip, I saw lions, I saw fucking every animal that you would ever want to see in real time in, in my face. But the sky was the thing that I remember most. So I'm not necessarily sure where I'm going with this point per just se. Think about that, but, like how impressed you were by something man didn't make. Yeah. When we come to New York, people come to see the buildings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They completely impressed by what man makes. Mm -hmm. But man used to be completely impressed by what God made. Mm -hmm. Not to sound corny, but the sky allows you to think what if yeah. buildings in your phone tells you what is. Well, it forces like you to it, think it beyond, beyond your present. Exactly, yeah. There, there's a yeah. what if up there. Right. There's a what is right here. The moon this is what is it is. probably <laughs> the most intriguing thing on the ever. Every day we, we see this goddamn moon, it's just be up there looking at us. You know what I mean? And that moonlight literally has a pull and a tug on the earth, it, right? We're connected to the sun, moon, and stars. That's why we walk around with that sun, moon, and stars, man. How, how much a percentage is our body of water? Cosmos. Over yeah. about 80, 70, 80, 80%. 80 yeah. And the moon pulls every tide, every yeah. bit of water. Of course it's going to move us. You think we landed on the moon? Uh, Michael Jackson did. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great response. <laughs> So I got rid of Mike. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when do, when are we going to get, cause you know, you know what happens when you start to elevate and you start to, you know, um, touch certain rooms and you start to, so when is going to happen? glad you're about oh, to ask this question. When it's going to happen, man, cause I know somebody going to pop up that went to college with you. Somebody went to high school. They're going to be like, that ain't him, man. I'm going to tell you who he really is. When it's going to happen? Could happen today. Shit, go ahead, man. Listen, I got multiple personalities. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We really do come from the streets. We were yeah. savage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Grew up in Oakland and St. Louis. I'm a real person. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Sure, like, to me, like, you can't expose somebody who's real. It, right. is, it is what it is. Right. You feel me? Like, the idea that you can expose people to say, hey, this person not perfect is crazy. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, obviously I'm not. You know what I'm Cancel saying? Cancel culture. I'm a black man in America, man. I couldn't be perfect, man. I grew up in impoverished environments. I mm. grew up seeing my parents go through it. Mm. And I mean, I grew up in poverty. I grew up having to do, I ain't going to say having, but doing different crimes. And I had court cases. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? Grew up in chauvinistic environments to where you be a womanizer. You don't know the best yeah. things to do. Like, yeah. all of this is what makes me great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what makes any man great when he goes through those trials and tribulations and he practices alchemy. Right. You know what I mean? He decided to take those things and make it light. Mm. Right? Otherwise, I couldn't have the experiences to teach others. Mm. Like, how? what would I know? Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, if I ain't go up in the streets and also grow up in different environments, how can I tell anybody th anything? Right. How can someone relate to it? Yeah. Like, so for me, it don't even matter. I know that the so-called idea of fame, fame is crazy. I don't know why people want to <laughs> Man, listen. Yeah. Because it don't make sense. I was listening to T.I. talk about that yesterday. He was doing some comedy. You know what I'm saying? He was just talking about the price of fame is when basically, you know, you get the benefits of being known and for whatever comes along with those benefits. But the people get to say whatever they want about you, true mm -hmm. or false. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think one day there's going to be like an AI where, you know, you have to... They have to be a credible source when people say something, a mm -hmm. libel AI. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A person shouldn't just be able to make a video and get other people to believe it. Right. They should have to go through some sort of like source, you know what I mean, credential to be like, okay, this is true because on a blockchain, he submitted this evidence. You had the opportunity to submit. You can't just put out false information. Nowadays, you can. Mm -hmm. And there's literally people that will just walk around and believe it because they don't want to hear the truth. They want to believe the lower things about you. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know what I mean? So for me, man, yeah, man, it is what it is, man. I don't even live in that fear, man. Shit, we was mobbing. You've got mail. We have um. Everybody know. We have this thing we do at the end of each episode. We have voicemails from our listeners. Okay. That either tell us a story, they ask for advice. I'm actually not sure which 
one we're about to listen to. Uh, but yeah. this should be fun. Just so you're aware, I'm the only one that hears these before we, so everyone else is reacting in real okay. time. What up, y'all? It's AC. Um, I'm out here in North Carolina, man. I came to see y'all in Charlotte. Y'all got to come back. We fought with y'all down here. Um, but just to, you know, start this shit off, man, give y'all a little backstory. So, um, a former homie of mine, we went to high school together, um, graduated. He was a year ahead of me. Um, but we kicked it out the high school and shit like that. I'm 30 now. But, um, yeah, so, you know, around 24, 25, when we was actually really hanging, I noticed I would deal with a girl, and then I get whispers of him trying to deal with her. You know, whether it's on a one-time thing or if I'm dealing with a heavy or whatever, right? So once I heard that so many times and, you know, I kind of brought it to him, he didn't know what I was talking about, still kept hearing it, right? So I just fell back completely. So with that... Um, you know, we ain't really talked over the years, whatever, whatever, both went on the weed, separate lives. So he got a BM, and I ain't gonna lie, she one of the ones. Oh, God. And uh, <laughs> she really, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, trying to get at me. And she don't know our history. So I really want to know what should I do? <laughs> I think he's trying to do a, a spiteful, <laughs> spiteful fuck. <laughs> So yeah, how old is he? Thirty. 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 Yeah. Leave yeah. that alone, man. I yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. We we all gotta grow up and go through things. I'm not proud of some things I did, you know, when I was younger. But I just would never encourage somebody to do a spiteful, like. So to grab that whole story, from what I understand, is he was dealing with a girl. His friend ended up messing with her. Yeah. And years passed. He now has a baby mother, and, and that baby, baby mother is, is interested. To Given, oh, given, the, given, the, given. You're not the gonna feel good after that fuck. Even if you do it, you're nah, not gonna not feel good brother. afterwards. Yeah, like that's <laughs> just not. I, it's not worth it. You know that. Yeah, you're not. Like, that's 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 a lot of indication upon you. you know, yeah, on how hurt you are that you ain't never healed. That you trying to get revenge and be spiteful and vindictive. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like it's 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 enough women now in the world to say no. You know what I mean? Somebody attached to a situation. I think you would respect yourself more by saying no. Got gotcha. you have sex with her and then nut is over and then you still feel like shit because, you know what I mean? You just as low as him. Yeah. And you got to look at yourself like internally as a weird human being. If you don't want to fuck that girl and you only want to fuck her because of a man, Ugh. That's weird. That's a whole you gonna be thinking about him the whole time. That's, yeah, whole, that's, like, that's, that's all. another conversation. <laughs> that's not. It sounds like it's like, less about her and more about yeah, him. No, listen, if he really like liked that girl and pursued her and then found out, like, that's, oh, that's, that's my that's ex different. like that's different. That's but, man, go nah, get not, some therapy, man. Yeah. <laughs> man you, you sound hurt. Yo, you get, yo, 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 go you, get man. some therapy, man. You know what I'm saying? That he try he man, hollered at one of your girls like it's all that's over with. Go binge watch some high level conversation. Yeah. We got one more? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's play another one. This is a page out of Maul's book. My book? Oh, God. No. Uh, what's up, y'all? I could just use your, uh, your opinion on, on a conversation I was having with somebody the other day. Um, so me and my girl go to dinner a few weeks ago, and I overhear the waitress telling these people a couple tables you know, across from us, whatever. Um, a gentleman had paid for the woman's food, not the man's, but then after he did this, he just, she was like, he just kind of disappeared. Like, I haven't seen him, but I don't know where he went, who he was, whatever. Which, I mean, I guess, like, that's a move. That's crazy to just, like, I don't know, whatever. But that's a bold move, you know. That's one thing. But then dude just left? Like, that's lame as hell. You can't do that and then leave. That's just that's the whole thing. Um, But the sickest part was that this is an Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> like dog they're selling they're selling gift cards for here at Kroger down the street like at max you just paid like 30 bucks for her to have like <laughs> some grilled chicken and two sides <laughs> like what the fuck are you doing and you think now you're, you're just big dick swinging in here with like 30 bucks for some some Alice Springs chicken in the Outback he went crazy at Outback didn't so he? what's like I, I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like that like if you're gonna buy somebody's meal especially if they're there with like their person or whatever you gotta spend at least a hundred like at least, at least. Yeah. So yeah, what, what what do you think about that? Uh, that shit just seemed lame as fuck. To me. <laughs> this is Paul's bag. It's not my bag. That's your bag. Look. All right, first of all, so let me get the backstory for those that don't know. So 
a friend of mine, I had took her to this restaurant uh, one one night. We went, to, literally just a friend. We never tried anything like physical, romantic, none of that. Outback. It, no, it wasn't Outback. <laughs> and she <laughs> liked Applebee's. the spot. So she kept saying how much she liked the spot. I say, listen, don't be bringing none of your dudes to spots I'm putting you on to. Like, Good. fast forward maybe eight months later, she hits me like, yo, what's the name of that spot we went to? Yeah. I'm going here to eat. I'll say, yo, here you go. She said, no, nah, I'm just going out with this guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just want to go there because I, I like the, the food that was there that I, I had. I feel for that. S- s- told her the spot. She went there. So what I did was I called the spot <laughs> and I picked up the tab, right? Because we had had a conversation. I was like, yo, if Crazy, you, because right? listen, hey. listen, because I was He's like, nuts. listen, He's I was, nuts. listen, listen, <laughs> He's but I was like, because we had a conversation before. I said, yo, if you out with a dude Sick. and Sick. a dude you used to talk to, you see him in the spot, he picks up the, the tab for the table. What you doing? Like, how are you maneuvering through that? Because now it's like, it's, it's like, yo, hold up. Like, who's this dude? Like, so I, I remember that. I said, oh no, this is the perfect time. Perfect. So I did that call. She texted me. She started laughing. She said, yo, he's so lame. He didn't even recognize that the tab was already paid for. Mm. He been in his phone the whole time. Like he not even, she said, I'm never going out with this dude again. Right. So how would he have known it was paid for? Yeah. No plan. No plan. So yeah, was he <laughs> not going to play? If the waiter comes to the table and say, yo, it's already been taken care of. He didn't even hear that part. Girl math. Yeah. Girl math. Girl math. Yeah, he didn't yeah, even yeah, hear that part. You know what I'm saying? Like. So whatever. So the internet kind of killed me for that saying I was dirty Mac, and I'm like, yo, it's not a girl. You was. It's dirty Mac, and if I'm trying to get with that girl, you that's still, my. That's, that's dirty. My, Mac I still feel like that was dirty. That's Mac. look what happened. Girl, look what happened. He, she's never talked to him again. She looks at him like a lame because, 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 because of an action that you did. No, that's not. See, you missing it. She didn't. She wasn't gonna hang out with him again because the date was just lame. He wasn't talking. He was on his phone the whole time. Like, but you ain't know that. I yeah, didn't know you that. Said, <laughs> you you threw an audible on the play. Yeah, yeah but exactly. my thing is, you my in the big, game. But but listen, exactly. big dirty this is Mac. different exactly. though. Big dirty this, Mac. But this is different because he only paid for Shorty's meal. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> he didn't nah, pick he up. Was, he didn't pick up the other <laughs> thirty dollars for the other. He was. I think he was smart for that. For you not picking up the homie's meal? Yeah. He not going to pay for his meal. I'm not meal. picking up but either of y'all meals. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not picking up nobody's meal, but it's just funny. that whoever do that. Is, You wouldn't pick up your homegirl's meal? That's like a friend of yours that's out I mean, if we together. I'm yeah. not, not no, if she no. with somebody else. she's on else. a date with someone else. Yeah. Go to the no. <laughs> Thank you. Nah, I'm picking up <laughs> you. Hell no. But only, only because, <laughs> only, only because, like I said, it's not like you trying to get at her or anything like that. You just know because y'all had this conversation yeah, before. Like, I'm going to fuck a whole night up. Like she gonna have to talk about you know, who's the dude that picked up your, your the, the 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 meal. That's a good point though. But what if it fucked up the whole night? It does you did fuck that. up the whole night. What if you did fuck up the whole? You're night? You're bringing in a variable Regardless, that shouldn't even be you a part mess of this. Because if that's me and some guy randomly, I'm not talking to her again. She got some Ever. weird shit going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> without a question. Got this anonymous <laughs> mysterious yo, trick. Who's this? Because I'm just <laughs> <just> paying for <laughs> all of her goddamn dinners. I don't know if she anonymous. I don't know if the. Trick. I'm gonna think the owner hitting the chef. <laughs> The waiter, somebody. Like, why did you bring me here? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell going on? Like when you in with your girl, no. But I'm a like, yeah, know everybody like, here. Yeah. Like, did you have sex with this person that just paid for this meal? Like, I'm a feel like, what the fuck going on? And that's what I want. I wanted that to happen. Just, I just that's, that's, that's dirty, dirty Mackin. That's dirty Mackin. But it's not dirty Mackin <laughs> if she tells the story about what happened. Now, if I'm her ex and I do that, oh. then that's like, yo, word. So y'all still communicate. But if she like, yo, this is my homeboy, like. That's it. You know, all, any man all. on the other I've side asked of you that this, wouldn't believe We're this. repeating this ourselves. Worst, if if that was flipped, shit like that. if that was flipped, you. you would never speak to that girl again. I'd be like, FaceTime on me. I'm no, you wouldn't. Yo, You'd you leave. Wouldn't. Call that wouldn't. Let me I talk would to leave. this nigga. Like, yo, you so, would leave. No, I'm not. You would bro, not I'm a mess with that girl ever again. Bro, that's not true. I would have said, yo, call And you'd be right. No, listen, I would have said. I would have been his wife. I would have said, call. No, 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 no. Oh. But I knew. No, I, well, Dirty this, this one. No, this one is different because the dude didn't even know the girl. And it was I knew. My homegirl. No, he was he was just on some wild stuff. You know what I'm saying? And maybe he did know her, but he didn't want her to know. Her. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He could have known her. It could have been it could have been somebody at the restaurant, or he could have DM her later and be like, "Yeah, I'm the one who took care of that." Yeah, you feel me? And she didn't tell him who it was because she probably went out with him again. I mean, listen, man. It's that would been one of the creepiest of DMs I think a woman has read. Like, yeah, that was me. I, that was me that paid for that. <laughs> How yo, was your asparagus yo. and mashed potatoes? <laughs> yo, that's steak and mashed potatoes on me. It's nothing. It's like, <laughs> lock, lock that guy up. <laughs> <laughs> but in, if she liked what she saw, she was like, that was different. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, it could go either way. But I, just, I think that that's, I think paying I for just us like and that. dipping, nah. I think that's hilarious. It could have just been somebody playing a game. 
You know what I'm saying? Just randomly doing something. You don't even know. That, That's what I was funny. doing. It could be funny with your homegirls. Strong and games like that, to play. But on like a legitimate like a date, like you, yeah, like you fucking everything up. No, nah, any man know, is going to be like, man. what the fuck? You could have stopped some children from coming in reality. Right, sure. see? Look. Or. Man. Or. And or they, they could have killed Blocking her. blessings. I saved her from a, a nightmare of a date that she told me was a nightmare. I didn't know that. When she I said it was a nightmare? Yeah. She, like, full, she said I would never go out. I would never see that dude again. Because he didn't pick up the tab? No, because he was just, you know, he wasn't present. He was on his phone. He was, she, I guess he, he didn't get her jokes. She got dudes paying for her dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was doing it. I'm going to get my phone and find avoided <laughs> the nightmare. Because if, if he was, he wasn't even presently aware that he was avoiding it. But if he was conscious of it, yeah. he'd be like, what the fuck are you on the show? Like, <laughs> exactly. How weird since you got me going, is this a game show? Like... Like no, he avoids out like he yeah. is the one who won and probably did. Yeah, he kind of he didn't have to pay, yeah. and he had to be attached to that ever again. Yeah, so he he got a free day. Hell yeah, he ate some food and yeah. then he left. Home, and whoever and was on his it. phone, he went with them. He's like how most women live their life. Yes, mm. girl math. We got one back. Um, before we close, I see you put these on the table. Oh, that's just some of the new tropics that we utilize. Okay. You know what I mean? So we actually have more than gold water. We got, um, we utilize functional and adaptive, uh, adaptogenic mushrooms. Mm. You know what I mean? So Not like the lion's manes, the cordyceps, CBD, different compounds that's good for chaga? increasing uh, memory, mood. Yes, yeah, chaga. Um, you know, we got the brainstorm coffee coming out, but I'm big on mm. new tropics. I take them every single day. Mm. Where, this is where, yours? Where can we get yeah, these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At uh, goldwater.com. G O L D E water.com. So that's one of the brands that I started with my family years ago. You know what I mean? So the whole family worked for that brand. And it was just it's one of those tincture? things where- Just put a couple Yeah. Of you just take a little <laughs> sip every single day. Um, and it's just one of those things I started because, you know, I wanted to wake up refreshed. Mm. You know what I mean, I wanted to be able to retain information because I was doing a lot of studying. And what I learned is like after the age of 25, right, your process of neurogenesis slow down. Right. So, yeah. you know, being able to put these compounds and stimulants within the body, like, you know, we like people, the only the, the, the most popular herb is weed. Yeah. But weed ain't the only goddamn plant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's so many more things, millions of them that do amazing different things. And so we just started researching, you know, what's what are some of those things that we can start taking? Yeah. Right. That would be natural substances. So like the cordyceps, for me, you know, it's 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 natural stimulant for when you're working out. You know, ATP, which is going to decrease that recovery time, increase that oxygen that you're getting while you're working out, <clears throat> right? And then for me, that focus of like the smart moss we got, that one is powerful because it's like it's going to get you into a calm state, but like a focused state. Okay. So instead of Adderall with all of the side effects, getting you mood swings and your energy is low, you ain't going to get none of that. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in a good state to be able to study, to be able to learn, to be able to get things done. Mm. So I take these things every day. And as you grow older and we dealing with all this technology and this, this fast paced things, you're going to need it more and more and more and more. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean, to deal with brain health. Because sure. brain health is really the greatest correlation with mental health, but people don't think about it. Oh, absolutely. 100%. 100%. The same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, uh, my brothers. I'm, I'm glad we could finally connect uh, and, and kick it a little bit. We got to do this again soon. Absolutely. This was fun. Yeah, I got to, um, I, I know you just, you everywhere. Every time I look up, you you somewhere. Oh, oh your trip to Africa. Mm -hmm. Before we leave. How was that? What was that for you? Because I saw when you went to the... Uh, I believe it was a, the jail that they housed some of the mm -hmm. slaves at. Yeah, the slave. And you stood on the apps. You stood your slave at the slave castle. What did that do for you, man? How did that? How did that change just the way you uh, you you feel, the way you view things, the way you view the world? Actually, going in, putting feet on the land. I've been to Africa before, but that was my first time in West Africa. Mm -hmm. So I've been to South Africa. I was hired to go speak at a school, and then I was hired to go to um, Egypt. Um, to go speak in front of the pyramids for a group. But coming to West Africa was a different, complete feel. Egypt, I felt a very spiritual presence when I was there. When I got on the grounds, when I went inside the pyramids, it, it was an overwhelming spiritual, like, I don't know, protocol to happen, where it's like it just hit me all at once. And I didn't think that was going to happen. But Ghana is where I actually felt safe. Mm. You know what I mean, I felt safe in the where I felt far away from the bullshit of America, mm. right? All of the bickering, the fighting, the perspectives, <laughs> ideas. 
you know, and I felt connected to that place where I didn't feel like the people in that environment was looking at me a certain way, wanted to rob me, wanted to take something from me. No, it was just a lot. Of, the people are very relaxed and calm. Ghana is one of the most peaceful countries in the world, mm -hmm. right? And it actually needs to be branded like that more. But when I went to the slave castle, I'm not gonna lie, that's like visiting a, a, a haunted house for black people, mm -hmm. black trauma. You, they take you through these tunnels and they show you where the slaves have been, you know, walked through before they were put on this passage come to come to America. And you feel the pain. You feel the trauma. You feel that energy just dark as hell. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie, I teared up while I was in there. and Because it's just, whether it's your people, I think anybody walking through that place mm -hmm. would just feel the pain of yeah. people taking their last steps of freedom. You know what I'm saying? And then being pushed off to this voyage of the unknown to mm -hmm. be in uncertain circumstances mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. So it was like being in those places, man, it, it just felt extreme pain. And while I was there, I had to figure out a way to like convert that energy. I don't like feeling bad. Yeah, I live in America and the greatest thing is like being able to convert, right? That darkness into light, mm -hmm. like what we go through, how do we convert that to triumph? Mm -hmm. So I remember I started, I did some pushups at the top. I'll be doing pushups everywhere I go, mm -hmm. but it was like the quickest physical thing that I could do to like represent to my ancestors like, no, I'm not going to leave here down. I'm not going to leave here sad and depressed. We free now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. y'all spirit can walk out with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We go, we go, we go represent that energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We gods on how we move now. Like we in a different day and age. I'm not walking out of there sad with my head down because that's right. the way it make you feel. Right. But I wanted to transmute that and put a different energy there because honestly, I think that place should be knocked down. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I don't think we need to go there and be triggered by the trauma <laughs> over and over and over and over and over and over and again. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that, you know, for a lot of people, if if you don't already know and feel connected to it, I don't think that person, that place is going to transform you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I already got knowledge yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm already educated on the slave trade. I'm already educated on the evils of history. I don't need to go through a haunted house to feel it. Right. Right. So that's why I was like, nah, we actually need more confidence and less fear. Mm -hmm. Right. We need to heal. So we're not triggered. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't need to be triggered. We need something that represents change. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we need to consecrate those grounds <clears throat> and transmute that energy and that place around there and that place around there should be thriving to say, hey, we in a new space. Now. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, this new space is a representation of the future, not taking me through the past. So, and that's just my personal feelings towards it, mm -hmm. right? I know some people feel connected to that, but that wasn't a place owned by black people. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was a place owned by them damn, them, them, them damn slave traders. And mm -hmm. them people was evil. Mm -hmm. I don't need to walk into the house of my enemy in order to feel connected to my past. That's a fact. But Ghana, Ghana, I feel connected to the earth. I feel connected to the soil. The food was better. Mm. The people were great, mm -hmm. right? Every place we went to it was love. We 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 stand in nice different places. I went with my bro Memphis Depay. You know, he's one of the top football players in the world, um, soccer, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, my brother Freedom Jacob Caesar, who I had a conversation with out there, our interview went crazy because it was like one of the first times like an African thought leader, an American thought leader Came having together. that conversation yeah, yeah. in that cultural <clears throat> exchange. So, you know, it just gave me so many realizations about how small of our thinking we are in America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things I realized is that the brand of black Americans is controlled by the industry completely mm -hmm. from a global perspective. Think of it like this. The average person is going to know Drake before they know who Farrakhan is, mm -hmm. right? They gonna know 50 Cent before they know who Malcolm X is, mm -hmm. right? They gonna know Tupac before Frederick Douglass or Marcus Garvey, mm -hmm. right? They know our entertainment, yeah. right? Versus our revolutionaries, mm -hmm. our social activists. And the, that's what we really gave to the world, mm -hmm. not entertainment. We have been the hardest people fighting for freedom, justice, equality, and change on this planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, every year, every decade, we've been fighting, giving y'all new leaders, mm -hmm. new ideas, new testaments to get behind. And we've been showing other people how to fight their revolutions mm -hmm. all throughout the world. Mm -hmm. But that's not our brand. Right. Our yeah. brand is not freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. Right. Our brand is entertainers. Mm -hmm. So you, we export nigga, bitches, hoes, death, kill, murder, drill music. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not exporting, you know, life, revolution, right? Activism, right? 
enlightenment. And when you go over there with your bravado, who you think you are, that's not who they see you. Right. They compare you to the rapper or the entertainment yeah, that yeah, they know. Yeah. So it's like we have to do a better job now as media on both sides. Africans have to do a better job of controlling their narrative, right? And I put this onus on the creatives that come out of Africa, the influencers. Show the Africa you want to see. Don't just complain about the Africa they show, right? There are multiple billions, so, so much richness and money in Africa, the billionaires and millionaires. If they want to change the image of Africa, it's their responsibility first to do it. Mm -hmm. Not on the black American to do it, yeah. not nobody else. If they care, mm -hmm. right, then they'll say, you know what? I want to fund some of these projects to showcase what Africa looks like. Mm -hmm. Go look at the Emirates. What are they doing in 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 uh, um, Saudi Arabia? They bringing the influence over there to show what it looks like. Mm -hmm. They got billions of dollars. Do the same thing if you care about the future of the people and right. how these people are perceived so you can increase the economy over there mm -hmm. and allow people to come in and feel safe mm -hmm. and create infrastructure and jobs. and Right? So... It, it, it had me thinking of things in so many different ways. You know, I was blessed by the imam of Ghana. You know, I met with, you know, uh, I went to the president's office. I met with um, the prince of Ghana. I met with the brother Freedom, who considers himself the prince of Africa. Mm -hmm. He's a businessman and real estate developer, one of like, you know, the most influential people in Ghana, mm -hmm. right? We, you know, was on jet skis out there. I showed the nice parts. I also went to the villages. We shot photo shoots and man, we had a good time out there. We had vibes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And I suggest people go. But when you go and you think about Africa, you have to think about Africans. Mm -hmm. Right. Africans is divided by tribes, languages, ethnic groups. You can't talk about investing in Africa unless you talk about connecting with Africans. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't just jump into the land. It's like, all right, there's Africans out there doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Talk to them, create connections, create networks and bridges and build. And last but not least, like, the silos of the American consciousness, specifically in like the conscious community, we think our voice is bigger than it actually is. Mm -hmm. It's drowned out in the world landscape mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what you think. If you want to become, if you become a global presence, mm -hmm. the local chatter don't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like the same way the people in your hood may look at you and then how the world look at you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So... I think everybody should focus on globalizing their brands, mm -hmm. right? The, the whole globe ain't going to counsel you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It may be a million people in America who don't like you. So what? Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's such a small percentage to the backdrop if you got another 10 million people in the world who yeah. know you, 30 million, 40, 50, 100 million. If you want to avoid dealing with the ills of society trying to force, right, their control mechanisms on you, go global, mm -hmm. right? So that was one thing that Africa taught me. It was like, you can't just be a thought leader for America. You have to be a thought leader for the world. Mm. For sure. Powerful. Yo, my brother, I want to thank you uh, again for just coming by, kicking with us. We got to connect again sometime soon. Yes, sir. Um, appreciate everything you're doing, all the conversations that you're creating, uh, all the thought leaders that you're inspiring. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate your, the work that you're doing out here just to change uh, just to the next generations, this generation, and thinking about what's, what's, to, what's to come. So thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Continue blessings. Continue health. Continue success. Thank you. And um, thank you for this high-level conversation. Yeah. And thank you, man. A, a, a Christian, a Muslim, and a Jew has walked in a room and had a high-level one. <laughs> 19 key, y'all. Ball is the Jew. <laughs> no, Warrior, 